Pilates. So I want to talk about some pelvic floor issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> anyway, um, a lot of mamas have pelvic floor issues, pelvic pain, prolapse, a lot of other core related issues that can go along with that, like diastasis recti, um, low back pain. But specifically right now for the pelvic floor, I kind of wanted to talk about and even bust a myth about Kegels. If you think Kegels are going to help pelvic floor issues when actually it could still be, it's actually going to be hindering it if you're doing Kegels all the time, if you don't know that yet. Um, by the way, my name is Olivia Kegel. I'm a prenatal postnatal corrective exercise specialist, a diastasis restoration specialist, and I help mommies heal their cores and their tummies from the inside out. Okay, so if it's not Kegels, then what is going to actually help your pelvic floors? Okay, the first thing to understand is that learning how to heal your pelvic floor is going to be like a puzzle that you put together because there's all different pieces of the puzzle that's going to help it. Okay, so let's talk about what, what I want to talk about are what are these puzzle pieces? Okay. The first one is movement habits. The second one is lifestyle habits. Then we're going to talk about some pregnancy and birth things that could have happened and even some body history. OK, so movement habits. What I'm talking about when I'm saying movement habits is how do you stand? How do you sit? Are, what's your quantity of movement? What's your variety of movement? Because honestly, how you sit and stand, if you are in a shortened, if you've shortened your pelvic floor, which most of the culture does, it's creating pelvic floor issues. OK, if you are sitting all the time for long periods of time, like if you have to work, especially if you're not sitting in the correct alignment, that's going to create issues. So quantity of movements, we want to learn how to move better and how to move more often because that is going to actually help your pelvic floor. If you look at different cultures, they move around a lot and in different ways. And they don't have the pelvic floor issues that we have. OK, it is estimated that by 2050, I can't remember the exact statistics, but we are going to continue seeing pelvic floor issues rise, prolapse, pelvic pain, things like that, leakage and um, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, all that has to do with the pelvic floor. OK, all right. So hang on one second. Let me see. All right. So if you're on here, go ahead and give me a hi. If you are watching the replay, you can put hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from you. You can ask questions as we go along. OK, so that's one of the puzzle pieces is movement habits. And I want you to think about how you move, sit, stand every single day. OK. And learning how to correct that is going to help your pelvic floor. OK, it's not just about Kegels now. Kegels do kind of play a part in it, but I don't really like to call them Kegels because we don't want to just um, activate the muscles around the urethra. So you want to learn how to engage all of your pelvic floor muscles, but only at the right times. OK, because the pelvic floor needs to learn how to handle different loads at different times. OK, and we can go into that later. But for right now, let's learn about the puzzle pieces, movement habits. Then second one is lifestyle habits. OK, so when I'm talking about lifestyle habits, I want you to think about um, what's your daily stress? How much anxiety do you have on a regular basis? What are your um, driving habits like? That's what I said already. You know, sitting, do you commute a long time? Um, what are your sleeping habits? How many hours of sleep are you getting? What are your dietary habits? Because we can actually eat food that will help nourish our pelvic floors, nourish our gut, nourish our core. All of this is going to help your pelvic floor. OK, um, so that's another piece to the puzzle. And OK, we'll talk about stress and anxiety here in just a minute. OK, so movement habits, lifestyle habits. Another piece is pregnancy and birth. OK, I want you to think about if you've already had your baby, what was the length of your pushing stage? OK, did you have an episiotomy? Were there interventions such as forceps and vacuum? 
okay? This is why I'm such a proponent of learning how to get into correct alignment. It helps your pelvic floor. Um, I'm friends with a midwife and she, and some of you may have heard this, but um, she was a missionary and um, in another country and none of the ladies ever had to really deal or have episiotomies. And she told me, she was like, Olivia, does this have to do with alignment? And I said, oh my gosh, yes. Because in our Western, Western culture, we are always shortening our pelvic floors, okay? And they, just think about it, if they are in Eastern squats and they're moving all the time, they're actually lengthening their pelvic floor muscles. So when um, she came back to the state, she said, there, you had to do episiotomies on so many of them. So learning how to, pregnant mamas, learning how to get into correct alignment, breathing correctly, actually preparing yourself for the birth process, you know, so many women, pregnant moms, just people in general, they prepare for a marathon, right? Birth is actually a marathon that maybe moms might read one book about it, okay? Maybe, and but they're not preparing their body for it. And all these things can happen, okay? So um, movement habits, lifestyle habits, pregnancy and birth. But if any of those things happened, I don't want you to think, oh, there's no hope for me because no, no, no. Our bodies were created to heal. We just have to know the right tools and maybe even what puzzle pieces that we got to put together, okay? Also, the second, the fourth one is body history, okay? I'm going to talk about injuries, surgeries, and trauma. Um, did you know, like, let's say you were a volleyball player and you fell or you were a gymnast and you fell, that can actually create scar tissue in your body that can mess with your pelvic floor area. It's kind of crazy, um, but that's true. And surgeries create scar tissue, so those can create all kinds of other issues. Um, there are certain ways to deal with those. Trauma could be trauma. And a lot of times um, when we hear the word trauma in pelvic floors, we think abuse or something like that. And yes, that can be some of it, but also it can be general trauma um, because general trauma will actually have an impact on your pelvic floor just by how the nervous system is wired and the way the pelvic floor responds. Okay. So we actually hold stress a lot of times in our pelvic floors. Um, we, and I like to tell people, if you have jaw issues or anything like that, TMJ, your pelvic floor is probably turned on. Okay. Or if you have headaches from it, um, things like that. Okay. So you have to think about traumas, stress and anxiety, all that can be held in your pelvic floors. Um, actually we hold stress and we hold, um, trauma sometimes in different muscles of the body, different organs, but pelvic floor is a biggie for a lot of mamas. Okay, another thing to consider when I say body history um, or even like movement habits is culture. What's our culture? Like I talked about sitting, standing, but we can talk about we have we cross our ankles when we sit, we cross our legs when we sit, and that's more feminine, right? but it's actually not great for our pelvic floors. So understanding all of this is kind of a basic yeah. foundation, okay? Um, and teaching you that, because the Kegels are not going to hit all of these different encompassing, th encompassing things, okay? Um, okay, so let me get back over here real quick. Monday, May 4th, I'm going to be starting a 30-day pelvic floor challenge and would love to have you come on board. Now, this isn't just pelvic floor issues, which it's going to help so much. But if you deal with any correlated issues like diastasis recti, leakage, um, that's pelvic floor, you know, back pain, things like that, this is going to be great for you. And it's all going to take place in my Fitabulous Moms Club. I'll put the link below this video as soon as I'm done. Um, feel free to message me, to DM me if you are interested. Actually, let's just do that. If you've watched this entire video, I would love for you to message me and DM me if you are ready to take the pelvic floor challenge and I'll give you all the deets to it. Okay, we'll just do it that way. We'll make it easy. Okay, so um, feel free if you can even post any aha moments that you've had in this video. But I just want to come on here and educate you that if you think it's just Kegels that are going to help pelvic floor, no, it's like I said, it's 
the, those all those things encompassing to come together to make you whole okay so mindset is huge because if you deal with stress or trauma things like that when you know that's got to get worked on the movement the body history what happened during pregnancy uh traumas things like that okay all right so that is all for today but we start monday may 4th on that challenge so dm me and like i said i'll give you all the deets to it all right bye ladies